trying to find that volume, but the region that's on the ground that we're looking at is actually the region bounded by these two curves. So we need to probably draw D first, right? Let's draw the domain. So D here, let me work on that. I'm going to draw a picture. Y equals 2X squared. I know that that's a parabola. I know it opens up, right? I know it starts at the origin at 0, 0. And the fact that there's a 2 here, what that does is it takes the parabola and it makes it like more narrow or it stretches it vertically. I don't have to be super precise right now. I'm just trying to get a general idea of what's happening. So this right here, that's y equals 2x squared. Now, the next one, y equals 1 plus x squared, is also a parabola, but it's been shifted up 1, right? And the fact that it has a 1 in front of it, not a 2, means that it's, it's actually wider than the one I just drew. So if I move up 1, and I draw a dot there, and draw a parabola that opens up, but it's wider, it's going to eventually, somewhere, it's going to hit the other one, isn't it? Like that. Now having a graphing calculator would probably be helpful, right? Because you could verify these results with your calculator, right? Does everyone see the region bounded by these two? Right. So right now when you look at that region, would you all agree that, let me draw that region a little bit bigger. I'm going to kind of exaggerate it. When you look at that region, would you all at least agree that the y values look like they're bounded? The y values are bounded between two functions of x, right? Between two functions of x. So I would call this one right here, let me do it in blue. I would call this one right here my g2 of x. And that would be the, the one that's on top, which is the 1 plus x squared. And then the one that's on the bottom, that would be my g1 of x. And that would be my 2x squared. What about your x values? Are they bounded between two constants? Yes? When we're deciding which one is g2 and g1, we Yeah, if you go back and look at the notes, OK? That picture shows it, but let me see if I have a better picture. Yeah, th there we go. So your y's are between g2 is at the top one, g g1's the bottom one. And then when you look at the formula, it's important because in the formula, do you see that your lower, of it, lower limit of integration is G1, your upper limit of integration is G2. If you flip those on accident, then your answer is going to be wrong by, by a negative sign. Are, are our x's bounded between two constants? Yes. What are they, though? You have to figure out, right? You have to figure out where those two curves intersect each other, right? So you set them equal to each other. All right, so we got to do that now. So the intersection, you do 1 plus x squared equals 2x squared. Uh, yeah, OK, not bad. Positive, negative 1? You probably could have seen that just by like a visual inspection, but that's the algebra for it, right? There we go. I'm ready to set up the integral. I want to I want to kind of summarize a little bit what I've got here. I'm going to erase uh, I'll erase this. So for my domain, right, here's what I've got. <clears throat> I have the set of all x's and y's such that my x is between negative 1 and 1, and my y values are between 2x squared and 1 plus x squared. That is how I can describe to you 
the domain on the ground. And now I'll set up the integral. And I must start with the outer integral with respect to x. And that means that I have over d, not r, Okay, with respect to x first, so negative 1 to 1, and then double, uh, sorry, integral again, this time from, from 2x squared to 1 plus x squared. So this is m probably the first time, maybe the first time in your life that your limit of integration has been a function of another variable. Maybe, maybe not, depending on your background. Our limits of integration are functions. And then our actual function goes in here, which was x plus 2y. And we have to integrate that with respect to y first, then x. Y'all following what I'm doing here? No? I'm going to leave my outer integral here. Bracket, leave some space back here, dx. I've got to figure out that inner integral now. So I'm going to take the antiderivative of this, treating y like a variable and x like a constant. Right? Because I'm doing the inner one first. So antiderivative of x is xy. And antiderivative of 2y is y squared. Right? That's the antiderivative with respect to y. Evaluation bar. And we are now going to replace what with what? Yeah, y is going to be replaced with the two functions of x. The y value is going to be replaced with 2x squared and 1 plus x squared. So we're going to go into this. We're going to plug in for y that polynomial function. And then we're going to subtract from that what we get when we plug this polynomial function in for y. So it's going to be a little bit messy, but it's all going to be polynomial stuff, so it should be easy for us to integrate once we're done. I don't see any like integration by parts or any crazy stuff happening. Let's see. Let's see what, what comes about. <clears throat> How are we doing? 215? OK, equals. I have the outer integral. Okay, let me uh, plug in here. Yeah, let me start here. So when I replace my y here, I'm going to have x, and then I replace that y with 1 plus x squared, and then I have plus, and now I have to plug in for y that, and then square it. So 1 plus x squared squared. And then I'm going to plug in 2x for y. So we're going to have x, and then for this, I replace it with 2x squared, and then plus. Now I need to square that right there, so that's going to be 4x to the fourth. OK? Good news. Everything's in terms of x now. And we're about to integrate with respect to x. So. So x plus x cubed plus x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 1. So I went ahead and I'm just mentally expanding that out, right? Like foiling that out in my head, putting everything together for you. That I just distributed x through. Over here, just distribute this minus sign through. So that becomes a minus. That's minus. Collect like terms before we take an antiderivative, right? Collect like terms. Uh, I don't need a bracket, but I'll keep it. Let's see, I'm going to go in order here. Minus 4x to the fourth. OK, took care of that. Uh, oh, I had another one. Thank you. I didn't see that one down there. I would have found, see, I, I'm starting to cancel things off. That's, that's a good habit to get into so you don't miss anything like I was about to. 
So these two are gone. Then cubes, I should have minus x cubed. And then x squared, I only have the 2 x squared. And then plus x plus 1. We're back in Cal 2. Right? We're back in Cal 2. I'm seeing some squinting eyes. Yellow, right? Okay. We've come this far, we may as well finish it, right? But it is at this point really just a Cal 2 problem, so. All right, antiderivative time. So negative 3 fifths x to the fifth, that's the antiderivative of this, minus 1 fourth x to the fourth, plus 2 thirds x to the third, plus 1 half x squared, plus x. Evaluate that from negative 1 to 1. Equals. We're going to get two different things. All right, first plug in 1. It's great when you plug in 1, right? Because all you get are all the coefficients, basically. So minus 3 fifths minus a fourth, plus two thirds, plus a half, plus one. And then when you plug in negative one, everything that has an odd power will switch signs. Everything that has an even power will keep the sign, right? So when I plug in negative one, I should get a positive three fifths, get a minus one fourth, get a negative two thirds, get a positive a half, and then get a minus 1. I'm trusting that you are OK with that. Distribute your negative. And I think when we do distribute our negative, we will get some things to cancel out, right? Like this will go away with this, because that will become a positive. What else goes away? The half. Cancel with this one. So we should have negative 3 fifths twice. So negative 6 fifths, that takes care of that and that. And then positive 2 thirds, and then minus minus is plus, so positive 2 thirds again, that's 4 thirds. That takes care of that and that. And then we have 1 minus minus 1 is plus 1, so it's 2 plus 2. Yes? It's minus over here, though. At negative 1, though, right? At negative 1, when you plug negative 1 into this, you get 1. Yeah. Oh, so it stays okay. negative 1 fourth, right? Yeah, there's all these little, little things, right? You just got to be careful. But you get the, I mean, the main thing, you, you get the main idea, right? The main idea is here. And then you get a common denominator and get an answer, right? Do we want a final answer? Thank you. 32 over 15. Any seconds on that? Are we going to? Yeah, got another one there? OK, good. There we go. 32 over 15. Yes? So how did you know that you were integrating with respect to y first and then x? The inner integral was with respect to y because the thing, I erased the domain. OK, so the x's were between two constants, right? That's always your outer integral. Your outer integral is always the ones that have the constants. Your inner integral would then be the y's. And so when I did the antiderivative with respect to y, I knew I was replacing the y's with those functions because it was my inner integral. Yes? So if it was split and the x was drawn between two functions and the y was drawn between two constants, you just put the So the question here is, what if the x's were bounded between two functions of y and the y's were bounded between two constants. Well, that's called a type 2, right? And so, but you would do exactly what you just said. Everything would just be reversed, OK? And that's, I believe, unless I have another example, I believe that's the next. Uh, here's just a picture of everything we did. Do we care? No, surface. 
There's the plane above that surface or above that domain. Here's the solid. We've, we just found the volume of that solid right there, which is kind of a weird shaped thing to be able to find the volume of, huh? I mean, that is not a very uh, common object. Like, you're not going to be able to go look a formula for that up, right? But we, we found the volume. So I don't have, I think we've got 20 minutes. Let's see if we can do one more of these, or at least set it up. Find the volume under z equals x squared plus y squared on the region bounded by y equals 2x and y equals x squared. Yes? Um, when you're integrating from negative 1 to 1, if you do it where you multiply it by 2 and integrate from 0 to 1? Only if, only if, yes, but there's a condition. OK. So you know how some of those things like went away completely? And some of them, dub they doubled? The ones that doubled were the ones that were to an even power, right? So you can only do it if your function is an even function. Then you can. So it goes back to this idea, like um, if I take the sine function, right? That's sine, let's say. It, let's say I was going to try and go from negative pi to pi. Then the answer should be 0, right? I can't just go from 0 to pi and double the answer. I can't do that because it's not an even function. It's an odd function. Um, odd functions, if you do it, it the answer is always 0. But if it's an even function like cosine, so cosine goes like this, and it keeps going, right, like that. Cosine comes back like this. So this is negative, uh, uh, did I do, yeah, pi, negative pi, no, hold on. Pi over 2 for this, pi over 2 here. But if I wanted this, right, what I could do is go from 0 to pi over 2 and double that answer because it's an even function. So on our last problem that we did, because we had a mixture of even powers and odd powers, it's not even or odd. It's neither. So we can't use that property. Good question. Good question. I mean, because that actually is going to come up. Like, we are going to see. Um, I was actually waiting for someone to ask me that question because Symmetry becomes a little more complicated in this in when we're in three-dimensional space. Especially like the surface on top, right? Like let's say you let's say I don't want to get too crazy into this, but let's say you have a surface that's like a like a paraboloid like that. Okay? Like this. And let's say I'm integrating that. Can I just like, let's say I have some region down here, whatever it is, whatever this region is, I'll call it D for domain. Can I just, can I just go from, like, take half of it, like, just the side that's on the side of the y-axis, and then just double that answer? You might have symmetry, you might have symmetry up here, but you need symmetry in your domain as well. You need symmetry in both places. If you don't have it in both places, then you can't, can't just double your answer. We'll, we'll get to it. I'm, getting the, the carriage in front of the horse here. OK. You've had time to look at this adequate time? You got the answer? Yeah? OK. What do you got? <laughs> pi. Right? The answer pi. Uh, so let's see. Do you all have an idea of what this looks like? That would be like a parabola that opens up, right? That would also be a parabola that opens up. So it's like parabola this way parabola this way. So it's like a big bowl, right? So we're trying to find the volume underneath this bowl, not in the bowl, underneath the bowl, but above this region bounded by these two curves. I think we should draw the curves, yeah? Let me, let me just use a computer. Okay, those are the two curves. That's 2x, and this is x squared, right? Those were the two curves. Was it 2x squared or x squared? Just x squared? OK, so this right here is y is 2x, and this one is y is x squared. 
Now, x squared actually goes this way as well, right? And then the line goes like that. But the region bounded by the 2 is that, that, that piece that's in the first quadrant there. And so I hope, again, you can see that your y values, right, your y's are trapped between two functions of x. And your x is just going to start here at 0 and go to 1, right? That's, they hit each other at 1? 2. They hit each other at 2. Sorry, my mistake. I forgot that was 2x, not x. So this is 2. You can just visualize, you can just visually check that, right? 2 squared is 4, and 2 times 2 is 4. So they hit right there. Okay? Let's look at the picture. We're going to go find it, but let's, here's the surface. Here's part of the bowl. I didn't draw the whole bowl, but here's part of the bowl. And we are trying to take just just the points that are in this domain and map them up into the surface and then drop down and create a solid region like that. Take all this other stuff out. And we are trying to find the volume of that very odd looking shape right there. Right? I wonder if I still have it. I'll have to look in my notes. Hmm. Yes? Do we need to write the domain? You don't need to. Okay. No, it's just I was just trying to include it in my, in my writing. Yes, sir? Do you have to draw out your, uh, your y graph formulas? I suggest you do, because if you get that wrong, then it can mess everything up, right? Because that's going to tell you not only what's on top, what's on bottom, but it's also going to tell you your restrictions on x. And, so, especially when we get into the more complicated regions that are like type 2 or the like other shapes. I think that's the safest bet. All right, so here I go. Off to the race here. So my outer limit of integration is going to be my limits on x, right? So and they go from 0 to 2. The Inner integrals limits of integration are the bottom function on the bottom, so that was the x squared, right? And the top one was the 2x. The function I'm integrating is x squared plus y squared d y dx, right? Always remembering that because the limits, the x is restricted between the constants, it's the outer integral that means the dy or the y has to be the inner. I think that that's actually going to be not too bad to integrate. I'm ready. Let's do it. So moving quicker. Integral 0 to 2. Antiderivative of this with respect to y is x squared y plus 1 third y cubed. We're going to evaluate that from y equals x squared to y equals 2x. Once we're done with that, we're going to integrate with respect to x. Integral from 0 to 2. OK, now let's plug in. dx. Replacing y with 2x. If I plug 2x into this, I'm going to get 2x cubed plus 1 third, uh, yeah, 1 third. And then I replace the y here with 2x, so I cube it, I get 8x cubed. So how about I do 8 thirds instead of 1 third? And then plug in x squared for y. So x squared goes in here, I get x to the fourth plus uh, one third x to what power? Six. six, right? We're doing x squared in here, but cubing it. So you multiply the powers, you get six. There we go. Back in Cal 2. Dot, dot, dot. We're back in Cal 2. Dot, dot, dot. I think y'all can handle that, yeah? Actually, never calculated. Type two.
Yeah, we may as well, right? I think type two is so similar to type one that there's really no, no need for us to spend a ton of time on it. I think it's a natural transition. Well, I'm saying that's the way I feel. How do you all feel? Does type two make sense to you? We just switch the position, we switch the roles. You let your, your y's be between two constants and you let your x's be between two functions of y. Now, we'll call it h2 and h1. h2 will be the function of y on the right side and the h1 will be the one on the left. Just like g2 is the top and g1 was the bottom, when it comes to functions of y, we think right and left as opposed to top and bottom. So the only thing that changes here in the integral is that your constants, right, limits of integration, constants are on y, so your outer integral is with respect to y, and then your inner integral will be with respect to x, and these two are your two functions of y. So pretty much the same thing, just switched around. I have seven minutes. I think I can set this one up. Maybe? Maybe? Yes? So if you're able to, that means you're able to transition from a type 2 to a type 1, if you can solve Sometimes, yeah. Type mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is very similar in Cal 2. We had things like this come up as well. Sometimes we did type 1. Well, what do we call in, in Cal 2? You would do just regular integrals and you'd be looking at your function as either a function of x or a function of y and you would either use like rectangles that were <laughs> vertical or horizontal. Is that, this again goes back to how it was taught. So I know like sometimes we're volumes of revolution. Yeah, like you exactly. You switched it, right? Easy. To make yeah, it's, it's same same similar thing. You can actually change your region from a type one to a type two if it has certain certain qualities to it. All right, let's take a look at this one. Um, five, six minutes, can I get that much more time? I know I've dragged you through already this far, yes? I went with this? <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, here we go. I need to get my head around that region. And the problem here is that if I try and solve these for y to, to make them functions of x, I have a problem I've tried and solve that for y, I have to do a square root and do plus or minus. So actually it would have two different curves. So instead what I'm going to do is see if I can take both of these curves and solve them for x instead of y. So if I take this one, solve for x, get y plus 1. Take this one and solve for x, I get x is, let me see, I would take the 6 to the other side and then I would uh, divide by 2. So I get 1 half y squared minus 3. All right, just move the 6 over, it becomes minus 6. Divide everything by 2. You all agree with that? So when I draw this, if I try and draw this domain, let's see, which one, which one do you, this goes back to how comfortable you are with graphing things, right? This is really what it comes down to. So this one right here, let me start with this one. That is a parabola, right, that opens sideways. It's either that way or that way. What's going to dictate that is the number in front. If it's a positive number, it opens to the right. So that's a positive number, right? So it's going to open to the right. And then minus 3 is going to move it what? Careful, yeah, it's left 3, not down 3, because this is now a function of y, not x. So this is going to look roughly like this. Okay. And then this one. I personally think the easy way, easiest way to graph that is to just go back to that one. Because I know how to graph that. Like that's just a line, has a slope of 1, it's moved down 1. So it's like down 1, slope of 1, something like that. So this is x equals y plus 1. And this one over here is x equals 1 half y squared minus 3. That's a terrible y. Pardon? It's right to left, so. Right to left. Yeah, is like the top was used to be. Yeah. So yeah, we'll call this one the H2 function, and this one over here will be the H1 function. 
There's one thing I don't know yet, though. Like, I, I can see, do y'all see this as a type 2? I mean, maybe I should back up just a moment. Do y'all see that the x values, the x's, are trapped between two functions of y, right? And the y values are between two constants. But you don't know what they are right now. You have to actually go figure out what they are, right? So you have to figure out where these hit and where that hits. And to do that, you have to set those two equal to one another. I have time. Let's do it. The intersection. We're going to just have time to set this one up. We're not going to have time to solve it. So I have to solve that, right? Set that equal to that. And that will give us the y value where they hit each other. Uh, that's a quadratic equation, and I don't like the 1 half, so I'm just going to multiply everything by 2. That's just to kill off the half, so I don't have to deal with it. And then I'm going to move everything to one side. Yeah. Just bring everything over to one side, and then that factors. So... Minus 4 plus 2 are the two factors in there like that. And so you get two answers. y equals 4 and y equals negative 2. Which means they hit down here at negative 2 and up here at 4. So maybe after doing this example, Hunter, you'll, like, it helps to draw it. I don't know, maybe, you know. Because without the picture, like, I'm not sure you're, you know, you'll be able to put it all together. I don't know, it depends on every, I'd like to see the work, right? I, I, I believe that drawing it was a good idea. I yeah. was wondering if it was necessary to do. Yeah. It, it seems like to grasp most of them, it would be almost necessary. If it's a mini exam, I'd expect, yeah, do the drawing. If it's your final and you're just like trying to crank through it, I don't necessarily have to have a picture. Yeah. All right, uh, one minute. I'm, I have enough time to set up the integral, right? At least set it up. So the double integral over, over the region D, of f of x, y, dA is equal to, the outer integral is going to be from negative 2 to 4. The inner integral is going to be from the 1 half y squared minus 3 up to the y plus 1 function. Right? These have y's in them now, right? Not x's. And then the function I'm integrating is x, y. And I'm going to go with respect to y, then dx, or dx, then dy? Dx, dy. <laughs> what constants, what are my constants, Can, the constants are restricting which variable? The y. That's the outer integral. So it's x, then y. So you have to integrate this with respect to x first plug in these two limits of integration, then you integrate that with respect to 